Thank you for joining with us again for this Wednesday Bible study of Southside Southern Baptist Church in Parkersburg, West Virginia. During this time of social distancing, we are been recording these videos for Sundays and Wednesdays, and I hope you enjoy those that are on Facebook and YouTube. And if you would like to make a comment, please feel free to do so. If you'd like to share that with somebody, uh, share this video with somebody, that's great as well. Um, Next Wednesday, May 6th, we are planning to meet together uh, for Bible study at 7 o'clock at our church building, which is located at 2004 Guyon Road in Parkersburg. Now, we will follow all the recommended precautions to ensure that everyone is safe. And we also plan to continue these online Bible studies and messages for the time being. There are many creative and funny things that others have been posting to Facebook and other places during this time, and this one made me laugh out loud. I'm sure that some of you feel this way too. And here's another one, probably back from the first few days of the pandemic when everyone began to panic over toilet paper. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we begin. Father, thank you again for your word, for its meaning and impact in our lives. And I pray that as we have gathered together to study your word, that you would speak to us through your Holy Spirit and that we would glean something to help us in our daily walk with you. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. guilty because of something you've done. Well, I imagine all of us have felt that guilt. I often think of um, the character Rex from the Toy Story series of movies. After he had messed up and done something, he says, great, now I've got guilt. 
uh, I think it's safe to say that we've all experienced those feelings of guilt. Now the problem arises is when we don't deal with the guilt or deal with it in the wrong way. So during our time together, we're going to look at uh, what the Bible says about the guilt that we do experience and then how we can properly deal with that guilt. So if you take your Bibles and turn to Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, if you've ever felt guilt or you've experienced that guilt, you've come by it naturally. We are all sinners by our very nature and by the choices we make. Listen to what Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people. So, who was Paul talking about? Who was this man in that verse? Well, Genesis chapter 3 tells us about Adam and the original sin, and most of us are familiar with that story. According to verses 8 through 10, how did Adam and Eve respond after they had disobeyed God? Well, follow along in verse 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God said to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. So, when we are confronted with our sin, we often respond in much the same way. We are afraid, we try to hide, we try to shift the blame, and then we often just live with the guilt and shame. Now, I want you to notice something important here in chapters 3 and chapters 4 of Genesis. You will find no place where Adam and Eve confess their sin, where they ask for forgiveness. You won't find that anywhere. God's original purpose in creation was wholeness, not brokenness. It was wisdom and love, not fear. It was peace and grace, not anxiety and alienation and guilt. So we have the potential to experience guilt because we were created with this capacity to know right from wrong, to be able to make choice. God also gave us that ability to reason, to think about things and to choose and the ability to experience emotions. And that one of those emotions that he's given us the ability to experience is guilt. But when guilt abides, when it just stays there in our lives, we cannot live the joy, the love, we cannot experience the peace uh, that God intended for us. So, is guilt always bad? Well, typically we tend to think of it as one of the least desired uh, characteristics of life, but guilt can be a good thing. Guilt serves to keep us in line with our basic values, our beliefs, and the truth of God's Word. Guilt is healthy if we respond to it in the right way, if we respond to it in repentance. And that's the first step in taking responsibility of our behavior. When we do it that way, then the stage is set then for forgiveness, Forgiveness from God, forgiveness for ourselves, and forgiveness from others. But unresolved guilt, and that's what we're going to speak about this evening, unresolved guilt is unhealthy. It keeps us stuck in the past. It keeps us having these feelings of unworthiness. It keeps us having those, the, the nagging insecurity in life. Now most of us are familiar with cows, uh, bovines, uh, but they have very digest different digestive systems than humans do. What's the main difference? Well, cows have the ability to regurgitate food from one of their stomach chambers and chew it up some more to get more nourishment from it. It's called what we know as chewing the cud. Thankfully, we as humans don't have that ability, but often we regurgitate guilt. It's the same thing of a company. We chew it over and over again Instead of getting any kind of nutrition over it, though, it makes us sick, sick and weak. Listen to some of the consequences of guilt from God's Word. This is from Psalm 32, verses 1 through 5. This is the psalm that records uh, David's, about David's experience following his sin with Bathsheba. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, 
my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. So some of the consequences of this guilt was just that persistent. It was there day and night. It talked about uh, groaning all day long. There was no spirit of freedom. There was a spirit of, instead of bondage. Uh, God's hand was heavy upon him. In Psalm 51, he also wrote about uh, that sin with Bathsheba. He wrote in verse 3, For I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. So he was experiencing that, that struggle of the sin that was always there in his mind. He knew what he had done was wrong. In verses 10 through 13, he says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. So he was experiencing this alienation, this separation from God. Verse 12 talks about restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit. So the, the joy was gone from his life. Verse 13 says, then I will teach transgressors your way so that sinners will turn back to you. And so there was no real desire uh, for him to reach out to other people about the Lord because he was not right with the Lord as well. So how do we get rid of this unhealthy guilt that we often experience? Now, our world suggests several ways. One of them is through medication. Another is through therapy of some sort, doing good deeds, taking your mind off of, filling that uh, with something good. And those, were, those ways work to some degree, but they don't deal with the root cause of the guilt. The release and freedom that we desire, the release and freedom from guilt, are achieved only through apology and forgiveness. And the Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 9 that we are to confess our guilt. We're to confess to God and not try to hide it or deny it. And it's only then that we will experience God's grace and forgiveness. So, how do we experience God's love and His mercy again? How do we get rid of the guilt? Well, those things we can have, His love, His mercy, His forgiveness, if we repent and ask for forgiveness. Listen to what these verses say. Uh, what, do they, what do these truths uh, tell you here about God's forgiveness and restoration? This is a very familiar one. It's in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and it was written to the people of Israel, but we tend to make that same spiritual application to our lives. It says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. So there takes a, a spirit of humility upon our part. Be willing to confess that to the Lord, to seek His face, then uh, He will forgive us. And in Psalm 32, this is the one where uh, David confessed his sin with uh, Bathsheba, he said in verse 5, Then I acknowledge my sin to you, saying to God, and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and then you forgave the guilt of my sin. And so that's a promise that we have there, that we don't try to hide it, don't try to cover it up. Confess that to the Lord, acknowledge it to Him, and He will forgive the guilt of your sin. And in Psalm 86 is another one, verse 5. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call on you. And so that's a reminder, too, that we need to call upon the Lord, and He is abounding in love toward us. He wants to forgive us. So we can experience forgiveness. We can experience freedom from all the negative, negative consequences of this unhealthy guilt that we encounter. God wants us to be free. He loves us. He doesn't want us to be in bondage, to have this heavy weight upon us, to have our spiritual strength sapped because of continuing to dwell in this unhealthy guilt. Now we're going to conclude with a video clip. It lasts about four minutes. It's from a movie made back in 1986. It was called The Mission. The Mission. It deals with the story of back in the 1700s how Roman Catholic missionaries went to the rainforest area of South America to share the gospel with the natives there. 
The natives initially were very distrustful of the white man because the only ones they'd ever encountered were slave traders. Well, eventually the mission work began to take root and converts to Christianity were made. And one of the converts was a former slave trader played by the actor Robert De Niro. But he experienced guilt over his past life as a slave trader and this guilt weighed him down. And the priest suggested that he bundle up all the remnants of his past life and then drag, drag those remnants, drag that parcel, that, that heavy weight behind him to remind him of all the bad that he had done. So as they trekked through the jungle toward the site of the mission, he struggled to keep up, dragging this huge burden that he was bearing. As they approached some of the natives, who were also now believers, recognized this man. He was the slave trader who had taken their family members and friends away from them. And that's where the scene picks up here. Ha, 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 ha. 
God wants to cut loose the baggage and burdens of your guilt. Will you allow Him to do that? There is no sin too great for God to forgive. There's no guilt too great for God to <clears throat> release you from. Are you willing to allow Him to do that today? Let's go to Him in, right now in prayer. Father, whatever that guilt we may be burdened by right now, whatever Thing that we have done that we think is too great, whatever sin is still uh, in our hearts and lives that we're dealing with right now, we confess that to you, we uh, agree with you that it is wrong. So Father, please let us allow you to forgive us of that, allow you to forgive us, to cleanse us, to release us from that burden as you desire to do. We turn from that sin now, and please may we release that guilt once and for all and not dwell in it anymore so that we can be free, so that we can enjoy uh, your presence and be willing to share that with others. Thank you, Father, for your good gifts to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope that you experience that freedom from guilt that God provides only through His Son, Jesus Christ. And I want to thank you again for joining with us for this Bible study. I invite you to join with us for Facebook and YouTube on Sunday mornings and Sunday evening messages from God. And hopefully, as we will get back to some form of normalcy, uh, we'll be able to meet together in person. We're planning to do that next Wednesday, but we'll continue to record these messages and post them as well. I've also been posting a moment of good news that every morning about 8 a.m. It's just a two, brief two to three minute time to focus our hearts on God. I'm Pastor David Somerville of Southside Southern Baptist Church in Parkersburg, West Virginia. Have a blessed day.